Innovation is a, is as you know, a tricky thing. And we do a lot of work to keep the culture at X appropriate for that innovation. The first thing to, to innovate is to iterate quickly, it's to, to accept the idea that most of the things you try are not gonna work, right? And so with that in mind, you try things and you always go after the hardest part of a problem first, because if you can't solve that part, why are you wasting your time on the rest? So besides iteration and going after the hard part first, we focus on 10X rather than 10%, right? We don't wanna iterate our way to a great solution for the world. We want to immediately jump for the thing that's gonna be a revolution. And we have to do that with a portfolio-based approach where we start incredibly small, often one person or even part of their time on a project. And we have maybe dozens of those happening at any time. What that means is of those dozens of projects, some of them have to stop and fail so that the other ones can succeed. And so we start off with that, that basic concept of a portfolio-based approach to trying to find a really big thing. Three things to talk about here. Number one, I've been in the field for 30 years and it has, as you say, changed a lot. There've been winters, there've been summers. There are two major things that are still true. The fundamentals matter. Understanding linear regression, ancient technique, <laughs> but still incredibly important. And what can go wrong with it critically? Because the biggest problems I see with, with startups or projects misapplying machine learning or AI is that they end up overfitting on their data, right? And this is an age old problem that it still is showing up. I'd say the, the thing number two is that the idea of doing unsupervised and semi-supervised training has been magical for the field. Because this has meant that all of the data that's just out there, the documents online, the photographs online, that becomes the training data for algorithms because instead of having to have a classification made by a person, they can just do things like predict the next word or predict, uh, take an image, shrink it down into something very small and then project what it should have been. And that's their target. Right? And so they don't, you don't have to have these very expensive supervised uh, uh, training examples. Uh, the last thing is with the advent of the transformer model that powers today's large language models. This has meant that you can go from natural language to just about anything. You can go from natural language to code. You can go from one language to another. You can go from natural language to images. Like all of those are being powered by the same core technology, which has been a game changer because now an advance in one field say somebody working on vision processing, suddenly affects language processing and everything else as well because they're all using the same model. We utilize these kinds of techniques in many of our applications. Sometimes they're straight up language applications, but other times we're applying it to more hard sciences and we're seeing amazing benefits um, in areas from computational biology to logical reasoning um, to things like geospatial reasoning. I use it for when I'm programming something that is pretty basic, usually in a language I don't know terribly well, but I just want to get it done quickly, I'll ask it to get me started uh, and I'll try that. I use it a little bit for writing, but I tend to find that it's not quite where I need it to be yet. Um, the last thing, of course, I use it for is something called inverse design. And this is a different spin on generative AI than what most people are playing with today. This is where you ask the computer to solve a problem for you. So you lay out a problem that you want to solve, you give it all the details and constraints around it, and then you let large compute solve it for you. So you get lots of machines banging on the problem, trying different solutions until you find one that you like. That's the one I use almost every day. <laughs>